All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today on Dave Cooper Live, where we showcase the people, the product, and the process helping us build it better. You have asked us what cool building technology we discovered at Advancing Prefabrication and World of Modular, and we are excited to showcase this MBI first place winner in the multi-family 25,000 square feet category, the Broad Holen Building. Today, we are going to welcome Sonny Wang and Jeremy Zimmon of Broad USA, inventors of Bcor, an innovative sandwich structure, stainless steel structural material that is far lighter yet far stronger than traditional construction materials. See how Broad is using stainless steel for all load-bearing structural members of a building, including floor systems, columns, load-bearing if that, and beams. The award-winning Holland Building, which is a turnkey modular multi-family building that is 100% factory made and has a range of energy efficiencies, features engineered into the building. But first, before we can show you any more of this unfolded, stack it and bolt it technology, we have to thank our sponsors for helping us to build it better. A big shout out to Forward Solutions Group for allowing us to deliver these fine examples of construction innovation. Forward Solutions Group is successfully driving companies to succeed where others have failed. Learn more about Forward's recent acquisition of Modicore, an ERP solution for offsite manufacturing. To learn more, contact Ben Hershey at ben at forwardsolutionsgroup.com. Also, can't do steel without Halleck LTD. Halleck has a long history of innovation in cold form steel manufacturing and produces innovative precision roll forming technology for customers throughout the U.S. and the world. Check out their machine buyer's guide for off-site modular construction or fast build construction with light steel for framing. Learn more at HalleckLTD.com. All right, so let's hop into it. Let's welcome Sonny Wong and Jeremy Zimmon on today's product spotlight. Hey, gentlemen, how are you today? Good. How are you, Dave? Man, I'm excited. I love this this whole concept. Finally, finding you know somebody that's really making a big difference in how we do these multi-story buildings and thinking completely different than the rest of us on the material you're using. So I'm excited about today's show. Does it show? Absolutely. Yeah. I love your passion. <laughs> Well, Love listen, for the we're, we're here to build it better. So why don't we hop into this, right? We ask everybody on this show, we want to learn a little bit about you from the moment you were born to this very moment in time. Do not leave out any of the good stuff, or we may just call your family members and have them on the show, and that could get quite embarrassing. <laughs> so let's avoid that. Uh, Sonny Wong, why don't we start with you, and then Jeremy, you go ahead and follow up. And then we're going to show everybody a video. That's right. It's video time. It's story time. And then we're going to get in the show and tell, which Jeremy really loves to do. So we're going to have fun with this today. So stick with us. All right, Jeremy, Sonny, thank you. Go for it. Okay, uh, let me jump in. Uh, first of all, I'm so thrilled to participate in this legendary program hosted by Davey. And uh, uh, I'm the general manager of the Broad USA. And... Uh, Prior to this, I started as a regional manager, which is focused on the uh, sales and marketing. And uh, I had uh, nearly 20 years experience in manufacturing industry, uh, mainly focused on the uh, uh, green production and uh, construction innovation. And uh, so I'm so excited to, to uh, be part of this program. Dave, uh, thank you for having us today. It's great to see you again, and it's, uh, it's an honor to be on your show. So I'm Director of Communications at Broad USA. Um, a little about myself. Um, so I uh, grew up in Southern California, Thousand Oaks. And when I completed uh, graduate school at UC Santa Barbara, I was very fortunate to be awarded a scholarship from Johns Hopkins University uh, to attend what at that time was the only joint uh, college program in China run by a Chinese university and an American university. So it's John Hopkins University and Nanjing University Center for Chinese and American Studies, known as the Hopkins Nanjing Center. And that was deep immersion in the Chinese culture and language. It was a great experience. And that kind of laid the foundation for uh, a career, uh, 
already 20 years, uh, marketing a range of products in China and, and throughout Asia. So I lived in China for some years. I learned the language. And a few years ago, um, I contacted Broad and I got to know the uh, innovative technology that Broad has uh, rolled out across multiple industries. And I was invited to head up the marketing of um, Broad products in the modular construction space. So that's the uh, 10 second tour. There's also a 65 cent tour uh, available as well. Oh, well, you know what? We're going to get into that 65 cent tour. All right. Well, listen, gentlemen, we wanted to kick this show off and really get everybody interested in what you are you you building at Broad USA. So we're going to do something a little different different today. We're going to actually start off with the video. Uh, Jeremy and Sonny are going to walk us through this video. We are going to then at the end of this video, we're going to show you the product and we're going to get into the detail and we're going to add, we're going to let you ask all the questions that you want to ask. Please put a Q in front of your uh, question so it's easy for us to find. And make sure you like and share this video right now and invite your friends and colleagues to watch. And if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you're yeah, wrong. You need to go there and subscribe after the show. And I will tell you this. If you are not following Jeremy and Sonny and Broad USA, you best go and follow them on all their social media because they are making a difference. All right, gentlemen, let's do this. Here we go. All right, walk us through. Okay, so <clears throat> this is our hold on building. This building was actually uh, assembled in June of last year, uh, 11 stories, 32,000 square feet, and it was stacked or assembled in under 29 hours. So you saw the couple of cranes going there. We'll, we'll have some other views. There's a time lapse coming up. Yeah. So you said 10 stories in how long? 20 and a half hours. 20 and, 11, and a half 11 hours. Stories. You did 10 stories of building. Yeah, there's 15 volumetric modules. Each of those modules is the size of a standard uh, shipping container. They're not shipping okay. containers, but, made, but we use the stainless, uh, the volumetric um, uh, modules use the size of a shipping container for easy transport, both intermodal across the ocean and on flatbed trucks as well. So we manufactured 56 of those in uh, 15 days. And then the stacking on site was in 28 and a half hours. I just want to stop it right here for a second because I mean I just people have to understand you know you have you have that saying uh, that we said earlier in our opening uh, monologue which I think is kind of says it all about what you guys do and that you know about fold it, unfolding let's talk and bold it right and this picture was showing that uh, how that all happens why don't you walk us through what you guys believe when it comes to the unfolded stack and fold it. Yeah, sure. So the, the module, the standard size is the size of a shipping container, 40 by 8 feet by right. 10 feet high. So you see there, it's 8 feet wide. And then on site, we unfold it to 16 feet. You're going to see that floor slab come down, or you'll see it in the time lapse video. Um, and there's no welding on site. It's just bolting. So we unfold, we bolt, connect the utilities, and we're good to go. So let me, let, so I'm going to play a little more because I'm going to see it right here, I think. So when you set these modules, one side of the module wall comes down and becomes the floor yes. of the empty space on the other side. Is that accurate? That's right. I mean, there it is. There we go. Yeah. And then there's our MEPs and everything already built in in the drop, uh, I guess, drop ceiling that may be already in there. Th that's right. Right. It's all finished, all fully functioned. So you have a combinate, you can have a windows or balconies there. Those just fold out on site. I mean, the precision on this has got to be just incredible. There we go. See that balcony fold out? There's a window folding out, kind of a right. closed balcony. So there's a choice. But those all come, you know, folded in during transport. The modules yep. have everything needed. So on site, we just, you know, unfold the windows or balconies, depending on, you know, which one is used, fold out. And, and we're good to go. So, and then here we have in, in, interior wall structures. And, you know, everybody has to understand, this is 10 times, correct me if I'm wrong, 10 times lighter than concrete. And this is stainless steel material that you're using to build this for not only just the walls, but structural loads as well, correct? Yeah, well, actually the walls um, are not. The walls are not load bearing, you know, so, the the channel beams that's made of stainless steel those are connected right. or bolted to the internal walls but the walls can be moved they're not load bearing 
even the exterior walls are non-load bearing. So it's the floors, the ceiling plates, columns, beams, joists, all those load bearing members are made of stainless steel. Right. I love these, these bump out window balconies. So that's a inner decoration is very spacious and very flexible based on yeah. your, uh, your, your needs. It can be uh, enlarged to the deluxe room with one bedrooms, one living room. Let me ask while we're looking at what, what materials are you using on the interior of this for your walls, your trims, your door? So, you know, it's flexible depending on the customer's need, but the standard uh, system, the floor is bamboo. Okay. So we have a, a, a B core, we'll show it in a second, uh, floor slab. It's a six inches stainless steel sandwich structure. And then there's a layer of rubber below that layer of rock wool above it. And then the bamboo. You know, so all together, it's about nine inches. About nine that inches. floor slab, and and in the video, when the floor slab comes down, you can see the bamboo on top. Already, in, yeah, there, already there's in place. the sandwich structure. All right, and this is the sandwich structure. This is the technology that we're gonna we're gonna look at today. And from from my understanding, you're gonna pick this up with one hand and show us like a one foot by one foot yep. piece, right? Absolutely. So you, Jeremy's gonna bring out the guns. Got it. Ten times lighter and is a hundred times stronger than the conventional structures. So it's ten times lighter. I'm gonna say this one more time: one hundred times stronger than conventional structured uh, structures and is resistant to mega earthquake earthquakes and typhoons. Man, you guys got a lot of talking to do. Right? So these are this is gonna be an interesting conversation. Yeah, you know, stainless steel. It's it's been used uh, for decades in many iconic buildings. Right. Uh, but usually on the, in fact, always it has been on the facade, the exterior of the building. And we looked at the non-corrosive nature of stainless steel with limited, unlimited service life um, and a high ductility, which means that, you know, the, the, it can undergo tensile stress without breaking. Stainless steel right. can actually deform, but not break. And carbon steel, the carbon makes it harder than stainless steel, but does that make it stronger? we would say that the ductility, the ability to undergo stress without breaking, that's true strength in the construction industry. So right. we looked at these wonderful properties of stainless steel and we thought, why limit it to the facade of the building? Sure, the aesthetics are there, the low maintenance, all those advantages, but why not use it for the structural members right. of the building? So we're the first to do that. Right, and, and you have, this isn't a concept any longer. You've, you've actually built this uh, yes. and obviously, and I think this is, uh, you know, this is what everybody has to understand. This concept has been proven. Uh, and now you guys are getting ready to roll out. Just quickly, before we get into some of the questions on the stainless steel, tell us a little bit about how large your factory is. So, you know, Broad, we, we were founded in, in 1988, actually. And we, our core business for the first few decades was high tonnage uh, HVAC systems for institutional and commercial use. At, called absorption chillers. These are non-electric uh, HVAC systems that are driven by waste heat or process heat, renewable energy. So they're green machines. You know, they, the, the refrigerant is water-based, not right. ozone depleting materials. So we, we have a lot of experience in ship in manufacturing and shipping of uh, capital, the high volume of uh, capital equipment. So we actually set up broad sustainable building in 2009 and that's when we got into prefabrication. So we've been doing it for the last 13 years, but we were already manufacturing for several decades before that. So our capacity is huge. Uh, currently, we have the capacity of 10,000 square meters a day, which is 107,000 square feet. Um, huge capacity. So say you can you we can, can do 180 it. modules. That translates into about 180 modules. Wait, wait, hold the horses here. 180 model, modules in one day? Yes. That's our That capacity. are ready to go out the door and be set on a building? That ready. Is yeah, ready to go out the door. That's right. That That is absolutely incredible. And we're going to get into some of this concept, uh, not even concept, but how, how the technology works, right? Obviously, you have systems in place. Obviously, you're using automation and a lot of really high-skilled, uh, I, I would say, team members on your team as well as technology, yes? Yeah, we have a thousand people on our, uh, doing the whole on modules. So the, the company is 3000 people worldwide 
and okay. a third are dedicated to this uh, this technology. Right, I love it. Uh, we, we have the uh, total twenty eight production lines, and uh, each line is dedicated to some uh, specifications and uh, the assembles or trays. Right. And uh, we have the forty six robotics to working with a uh, human being to make these things happen. With, with the utmost accuracy, in which is required. Yeah, that's one of the advantage in modular. So the more you can move the production to the factory, the more precision it is, the less right. unpredictability, uh, more predictability of the project cycle. So we're almost 100% made in the factory. No trades on site. Yep, and that, that translates to very little dumpsters on site for all of you that are still using 100 dumpsters every job site you do. So, all right, let's get into this a little bit, all right? You know, why stainless steel for the load-bearing members of, of your buildings? I know you touched on it a little bit, but let's talk about where the concept of using stainless steel came from and why. And, and, and tell us a little bit about how long it took you to kind of really pull this together. Well, so when we decided, our, our chairman and the inventor of B Corps, uh, Mr. Zhang Yue, uh, in 2009 uh, founded uh, Broad Sustainable Building. And, and the, the primary motive was a year earlier, in uh, neighboring Sichuan province. So our headquarters is in Hunan province, south of South China, north of Hong Kong. Uh, a neighboring province of Sichuan had a, a terrible earthquake and it was uh, 70,000 uh, deaths. And so Mr. Zhang saw concrete buildings just crumble. And so he wanted to build it better. And so from the get-go, from 2009, we've always been steel-based never worked with concrete. So in our buildings, there's no concrete above the foundation or above the podium. So he said, how am I gonna build it better? Steel. So we started with carbon steel in those early years, and then we developed B Core in 2017. So the whole on building concept, the volumetric, that was unveiled last year, but the that sandwich structure B Core was developed in 2017. Um, it's hot air braised in an oven that also Mr. John invented, uh, 10 different iterations. So we invested uh, one and a quarter billion dollars over how many years? It's seven or eight years of development. One and a quarter billion dollars um, before we actually had the final product. And some of that was 10 different iterations of the ovens. There was a lot of failures along the way, but he was sure. convinced that we wanted to move from carbon to stainless. And, 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 and why was he convinced of that? Because of the properties of stainless steel, uh, basically two. So stainless steel is, um, depending on the grade of stainless steel, it could be 30 to as much as 90 times less corrosive than carbon steel. Yeah. So it has, you know, an unlimited service life. And then, you know, the, the ductility. So the ability of the steel to experience stress, you know, without breaking has elongation, it can deform, but not break. So if there's a load shift in the building in a seismic event, for instance, the building won't collapse. Even the stainless steel can be deformed, but it won't collapse, won't break. So right. he felt stainless steel is the best material to use. Sure. And, and you know, where, where you're building and, and the resources, is, is stainless steel readily available or how's the sourcing yeah. of steel these days? Yeah. Um, you know, stainless steel, this, the secret sauce is the, you know, the chromium and, and the nickel. So the chromium gives it the non-corrosiveness. Yep. You know, the, the chromium reacts with, with the oxygen. It forms a kind of a protective layer on the steel, and, and that prevents oxidation. And then the nickel, that gives it that ductility, that strength. Um, so that's that's the secret sauce. So, you know, there's there's a little bit of stress now with with nickel. Uh, you know, Russia is right. the number two producer, and so you know prices have gone up. But there's still plenty around. Canada by far is number one. Uh, China's in the top six. China has nickel, and other countries as well. So there's not really a shortage, but it's kind of like oil. You know, yeah. if Russia is a major producer, it, it, prices are going to go up, even though the U.S. can crank out a ton more oil in the Gulf and other places. So nickel is the same. It's not really a shortage, but prices have been going up because of that that market stress of a major producer being not able to export their product. You know, if, if, you, if, if you can put 10 floors of a building together 
as quickly as you're building these things, you know, for residential, multifamily, hotels, whatever the case is, heads on beds, time is money. That is serious yeah. time saving right there, especially if you're building so many units in a day and put them out the door. Uh, there's a real value to that that my guess would offset the cost of using uh, a stainless steel or any steel for that matter with today's market. So let's get into the let's get into the the the. the the, I guess the, the bread and butter of this thing. What is the B core? And how is it innovative and contributing to the construction industry in your minds, right? Because you said it earlier, you're not using concrete. How is that even possible? Well, it's, there, there are steel bits. Oh, you want to? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, you know, just uh, we mentioned uh, the, the material stainless steel. It's common things and it's not new for the uh, construction industries. But the beauty of our uh, B core is that it's a structure. It's a sandwich like structure, which is use a top plate and lower plate. In between is a array of the, uh, the core tubes, very thin core tubes. They all made of the stainless steel. Then we through the, the air breathing of over 2000 Fahrenheit temperature in our developed the oven equipment, it's been an uh, integrated one. It can be served as a, 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 a kind of CLT in the wood frame. And uh, it uh, has very strong uh, performance uh, in, terms of, in terms of the uh, uh, strength, in terms of the ductility and uh, other things. So. We as a manufacturer to first achieved the mass production of such a structure, big materials, at very low cost. So that's a, 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 a the, the, the kind of the innovation from broad. Got it. And, and Jeremy, you actually have a sample of this. I do uh, sitting there. Why don't Why don't we look at this? Because I think a lot of questions are going to come out of it. What you're going to show us is really the 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 top and bottom of the floor with with the the cores inside of it can you walk us through what yeah. we're looking at when you show it and then talk us uh talk us through like wiring uh insulation uh fire you know g give us the lowdown on all of this okay so here's the and as dave said it's it, as, as you said it's very light um so this is a b core slab so we have stainless steel tubes these are core tubes made of it's the grade is 304 L 304 stainless steel. It's like your kitchen stainless steel, but it's hardened through that hot air copper brazing process that Sonny mentioned. And then these are brazed between two stainless steel plates. So from plate to plate, it's called a slab. So this is our flooring system. Um, for the columns, beams, and joists, we use duplex stainless steel, channel stainless steel. Th this is used only in the flooring system. Can you give so us a cross see, view of that, like from the corner? The, yeah, you can see the. <laughs> there you go. You see the copper. Here. See that copper that I'm pointing yep. to. So that's the brazing. Copper has a melting point about 800 degrees less than stainless steel. So when it goes into that oven, uh, it, it forms an excellent solder. We find it's the best soldering material. So, so you're using so you're using stainless steel and then you're using copper for the solder. Copper brazing. And so this is this is a floor slab, but it has other applications too. We're also applying it to bridges. Uh, it's a sa sandwich structure similar to this, but the core tubes, the diameter and the density might change. Um, we have other applications too, like wind turbine blades. You know, wind turbine it's very sustainable, but the blades are made of a kind of a fiber epoxy that you can't recycle it, and it just goes in the landfill or it just piles up. It doesn't last that many years. Stainless steel lasts much longer. And at the end of its service life, it's 100% recyclable. It's another advantage of stainless steel is that it's uh, here in the U.S., so over 70% of stainless steel product is actually made from scrap, not directly from ore. So that's one right. thing. But then it, at the end of the life cycle of the product, like a wind turbine blade, it can be recycled. And every time you recycle stainless steel, it's as good as the original. It doesn't the the inherent strength doesn't deteriorate as you recycle it. That's amazing. So we're doing a lot of cool things with stainless steel. Yeah. Even outside of the modular building space. 
I don't know how many times I'm going to say that's amazing on this show, but it might be a lot. All right. So let's, let's talk about this space. Like, how do you insulate that? What's the sound transfer like? You know, because I mean, is, how do you control that sound transfer between floors? If there's no concrete, right? You're not getting that thick concrete bed on top of that. Yeah. So we use we use rock wool. That's the insulation we use. We, we blow it in between these tubes. And rock wool gives us that thermal as well as acoustic uh, performance. We also use it in the external walls, which are mm -hmm. you know, carbon steel, right? Next, the, mm -hmm. the walls are non-load bearing, so we don't have to use stainless. Um, and we use eight and a half inches of rock wool. And just to give you an idea, it gives us the thermal performance of a 29 and a half foot concrete wall. So we have a lighter layer on the floor than we do in the wall, but that gives you an idea of the effectiveness of, of rock wool. So, right. And then the other thing about this, talk to me about the deflection, right? I believe if I recall earlier conversation, you can cantilever almost, is it 50 feet with this structure? Yeah, th that's right. We actually have a building we put up two and a half years ago that we actually cantilevered out 55 feet. And um, I, I can actually show a picture of it, but our, our chairman and our executives, they well, sit on I a wing. It. I think you have a video it's, of it, it, right? Yeah, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a different video, but it's in that it's in the PowerPoint. I, yep. I can I'll show pull, it. I'll, I'll pull it up. I'm actually on your website too, so I'm paying attention. <laughs> uh, there's just so much here. Um, so yeah, we can we'll show some more pictures of that. But I think you know the comments are lighting up. The, the uh, so we're going to want to get to that as well. We only have uh, about another 15 minutes here. So but let's get into some of the other uh, sustainability factors of this and the end. You know. Uh, not only is the building made of a different material, not only is it an unfolded, stack and folded building, not only can it cantilever up to 50 feet and with the deflection, not only can it be reused once it's taken down, mounted down, and it doesn't lose its property, what what else is there uh, with all of this that, that you're just not telling us yet that we should know about? What's special about the whole end building? Well, you know, what, one of the things with reinforced concrete buildings is that and unfortunately, we saw it in Surfside, you know, last year, is that when you have not necessarily a hurricane, but wind driven rains, um, eventually water will will penetrate, you know, the concrete and that rebar inside will start to rust. Then the concrete around it will crumble and then the integrity of the structure is compromised. So stain, that's called spalling and, and, and stainless steel that that won't happen. So we think it's not only a sustainable material, but it's the safest uh, material as well. And regarding the sustainability, I think uh, we, we major mentioned two things. One, the stainless steel is, can be reused and recycled compared to the concrete. And also the, the, the hollow, which is we manufactured, has a longer uh, lifespan than the regular buildings. It's almost 20 times longer. So. Given this, I think take the example of the 30,000 square feet building, for example, from the manufacturing to on-site installation and to the uh, lifespan operation, its total can save 95% of CO2 reduction uh, emission. And uh, uh, that's, a, that's a huge uh, saving. It's a huge uh, uh, benefit for the environment. Yeah, yeah that's the life cycle assessment that was performed. So the the LCA is, is the environmental impact of a material from manufacture to obsolescence, or in, in this case, construction demolition. And so right. from the lifespan, because it's non-corrosive, the lifespan is so long, it has, a, it has an extremely um, low carbon emission throughout its life cycle. Life cycle. Well, that's gonna lead me into this next question. You know, the whole in multifamily building energy efficiency. Let's talk about these energy efficiency. We talk about sustainability, the reuse, reuse, the circular economy, so to speak, of the products in the building. What about the energy efficiency of the building? Yeah, so uh, for one thing, the rock wall itself, it has, it, as I mentioned, you know, the a tremendous thermal capability yeah. and acoustics as well. You have 55 dB between floors. You know, it has, um, it, it, it knocks it out of the park in terms of the uh, acoustic performance as well. But we also have triple or quadruple pane windows. Um, we have, um, you know, automatic, uh, sun, we have external sunshades and internal thermal shades as well. 
and those are all automated. We have a broad building automate BBA, we call it broad building automation. Um, and we also have um, a ventilation system. It's actually a broad product. So we do indoor air quality products as well. And it it's a product called a um, an ERV, uh, energy recovery ventilation mm -hmm. system. So it brings in 100% fresh air from the outside, no, re no recycled or return air. And when you do that, the trick is how to avoid increasing your cooling or your, or your heating loads. So fresh air is always best. And that has HEPA filtration. It's very clean before it's delivered to the internal space. But if you're bringing in, we're in the New York area here, you know, 32 degree air um, into a 68 or 70 degree uh, heated space or vice versa, hot, humid air bringing into an air conditioned space right. in the summer, how do we avoid increasing our cooling and heating loads? And so that energy recovery, it's an air to air energy exchange. So the spent or the exhaust air going out will warm or cool the air coming in. Sure. It's a really cool technology, <laughs> literally. Um, and we get about 80% energy efficiency from this process. So this also saves a lot of energy. The ventilation itself is like 80 watts to power it. That That's it. Right. And that that's our ventilation system. Wow. So it's not only healthy, but it's, it's um, okay. you know, energy saving as well. I, I'm going to I'm going to put this up on the screen. It's your it's just the home page of your website, because I think it says a lot. Right. You're building inspiring space, you know, uh, spaces. Um, but as this moves through, you're going to see that your company really has a mission to do what's right for, you know, the people and the earth moving forward uh, and sustainability and energy efficiency and all of that uh, is, is a major focus uh, of what you guys have going on only to provide products and services beneficial to the earth and humanity and i think that's really important to understand it's it's you're not just doing it but i mean you're putting it everywhere you are that this is really a mission for you on uh how do you how do you build it better yeah and th on those trucks that you just showed so that's our absorption chiller that's the hvac we have hundreds and hundreds of units uh, in, in the u.s Thirty-five thousand of these in 82 yeah. countries around the world wow. so you might wonder what is HVAC have to do with modular buildings and you know what, what's yeah. the relationship and the relationship is with those products and the indoor air quality products like the ventilation equipment and the air purification you know we have a common theme of um, reducing energy consumption reducing material consumption reducing carbon footprint and that's what all these products have in mind even though they're in, in kind of different industries yeah sure so I put the non-electric air con uh, right the absorption chiller just to show it so very, very neat, very neat. Right, that, that, that's a <laughs> commercial air conditioning business is our core business uh, back to 30 years ago. And, uh, but it's a very uh, green energy and uh, very energy efficiency because it can take any forms of the heat, including the waste heat yeah. to make cooling. So it's uh, greatly reduced uh, customers' carbon foot, footprint. Yeah, and it's it's important that we're broad based, and that 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 pun is intended, because when you get into you know the modular building industry, it's 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 not easy. Projects it, it takes time to enter the market and 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 and, and succeed. So we have the air conditioning and the indoor air quality and other products. So we're we're self capitalized. We're a private company, yeah. uh, self capitalized, and so we have that financial stamina to enable us to invest that over a billion dollars in developing the the B Corps. Um, and then to invest further in a production line, we can crank out a lot of modules each day. To do that, we have to sell a lot of the air conditioners, and, and we're able to do that. So that 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 broad foundation, I think, really helps us as we get into the modular space deeper. What's Broad's plans for the U.S. market? Put up a lot of buildings. <laughs> so we're new. We're we've been in the U.S. since 1997. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, we have hundreds of these absorption chillers deployed, but for the modular, most of our buildings, you know, in fact, all the buildings are, are overseas. So we're looking for developer partners and people with a vision that recognize the benefits of the hold on building. And, um, and again, we're able to do that because we have the strong foundation here based on our other businesses. So we're new in the U S in, in, in terms of modular, but we're definitely not a startup. We have a very strong foundation here. We celebrated our 25th anniversary two months ago. 25 years. Well, congratulations. Yes, <laughs> we, we are the local. Say it again, Sonny. So we, we are the local, actually. We, we have a, a, a huge 
uh, the customer uh, uh, resources, and we are strong engaged in the, the North America, including the U.S. market. And uh, we definitely want to uh, uh, take roots, deep roots here, and to to develop uh, in the future. Yeah, and and our production, we we've beefed up our production lines for this B core and hold on building in general. Uh, in China, but we do plan to onshore production here. Once we have that critical mass of buildings, we have the right partners, uh, we'll be onshoring production here. That's the goal. I can't give a time frame. It depends how how quick we can get these buildings up first. Sure. But uh, that that is our plan. All right, let's go to some questions. Uh, Michael Bruce, good to see you, Michael. Looking forward to hearing more about this topic. How does it compare from a cost standpoint to other materials like A36? Well, you know, stainless steel is not the lowest cost uh, material, and we've we've already established that. But we've seen that all steels, um, all forms of steel, have risen in the last year. Uh, the figures that we got at the at the uh, Modular Building Institute um, uh, convention last month, called World of Modular, um, all the steels are a twenty percent or, or or more increase over the last year. But even lumber has gone up. It could be because of fires in Canada and other reasons, but all construction materials have increased. So stainless steel versus that particular type of steel in particular, I can't really comment on. But in general, stainless steel is is more expensive. But then you have the benefits of, of you know, a longer lifespan and, and uh, that higher ductility and other benefits of stainless steel that we think offset the higher cost. Thank you. I think uh, one of the key drivers for modular construction is not only to uh, reduce uh, uh, the schedule, but also can uh, save the cost. And uh, based on uh, general uh, rules of thumbs, this can save 20% at least uh, compared to the regular or conventional construction. The same applies to the broad. And uh, our purpose is try to popularize this kind of technology and systems and by delivering uh, uh, the, the huge volume and uh, 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 in the market at the same time we we, we, we try to uh, cut out the cost production cost by uh, huge volume uh, procurement which is can trade off our cost uh, greatly so for now, I, I have to say we are confident that we are compatible uh, for the B core uh, material uh, with uh, concrete, with uh, carbon steel, or even with the wood frame. Okay. So I just got to give a shout out. Jolie and Bowen is the reason I found your booth at World of Modular. He came and grabbed me and he goes, <laughs> Hi, you Julian. need to see this. So, and he has a sample of it sitting on his desk. So. Uh, it wouldn't be right of me to say that I found you on my own. Julian, thank you for the introduction on that. Much, uh, much appreciated. Much love, as we say here. So, all right, let's keep going through some more. I know there's some other questions here, so let me just scroll down. Oh, no, 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 no. Look at that. Michael Bruce says quite an engineering feat, which we love. Thank you, Michael. Um, question from Doug Pill says, how has the structural design and assemblies in the MEP connections been approved? To produce and use in the U.S. via ICC. Yeah, so we're in the process of doing this now. We're in the process of uh, certification by the American um, AISC, American Institute of Steel Construction, um, and the MEP will also all be um, certified here, including our own ventilation system, the air conditioning, uh, and all the other components. And probably, uh, it, you know, ICC through their NTA, ICC NTA. Uh, they're, act, they're, they're a third party inspector uh, that are approved in at least 39 states that I know of. And so we'll, we'll most likely be going with them as well. Um, once you have a project, they do the plan review and the quality review. They do the on site inspection of the modules. In the case of California, they have to witness 100% of the production. Other states might not be so stringent. So every state you know, has its own uh, modular, there's no uniform code. Um, and that makes a little bit of a challenge, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll certainly work with ICC and in some cases other approved third-party vendors as well, uh, third-party inspection as well. 
Yeah, and, and the other thing is that since uh, in the U.S. there is uh, no uh, uniformed yeah. standard federal regulations of building code, so we have to uh, working with uh, local uh, developers and uh, uh, engineers, designers, architects, and to make sure we we are uh, fully meet the. Uh, requirements of the local building code yeah so you you work with local licensed state engineers yeah. and architects or structural engineers to make sure that the product project can move forward with you on that uh, all right we got a bunch of comments here i'm going to try and get through as many as i can quickly i always uh like our good friend from france henry mickleberg he was quite happily cooking an excellent carbonara <laughs> wins unsurprisingly the strength stat claims piqued his interest so uh, Henry's no uh, no stranger to the show. He's fascinated to know how all uh, how the uh, carbon uh, is it like my carbonara in 2019 for you. Apparently they blend. Fascinated to know how also when you say conventional materials, we're talking about the usual suspects, right? So he's talking about the four types of stainless steel. Yeah, we use austenitic stainless steel. Uh, the B core, you know, it's a combination of that 304 that I mentioned, and then the plates is a is a full, is a duplex stainless steel. And we have other kinds of duplex stainless steels in the columns and beams, but it's all austenitic. Uh, that, that's that's the kind that we use. And conventional, yeah, um, compared to concrete, carbon steel, um, Perfect. stronger and lighter. Now, now remember, strength. There, there's a little bit of it might, it's, so carbon gives the steel its hardness, but hardness, in, in our view, doesn't necessarily equate to strength. That right. ductility, the ability to experience or undergo you know, load shifts and, and tensile stress and not break. That's true strength, but it's not hardness. Carbon steel is harder than stainless steel, might not be stronger. <laughs> uh, always great questions from Henry that enlighten. Um, so appreciate it, Henry. Gilbert Meyer, all the way from Honduras. Uh, he said, great stuff, thanks for the presentation. Uh, we will be doing something similar, cold rolling, uh, stainless steel, plastic extrusion lines. Love to connect with you. Our new Vigo system will allow speeds of 1,000 square foot building in 30 minutes. So Gilbert is an inventor as well. So you guys should definitely, definitely connect. And then our good buddies. Here's I, I always say this. We got, we got Boxy on, Mateo. Him and his brother are under the age of 26, and they opened their own modular factory in Louisiana, and they are, they are doing wonderful things. He asked, did Elon Musk copy you for his starship design and more serious question would you recommend this material for single family homes well so we're we're targeting the mid and high rise multifamily market we think that given the housing shortage and the shortage of still of uh, you know of uh, skilled construction labor uh, that that that's the greatest need um so our sweet spot is eight to 32 stories but we can certainly do less um, that's what, but the economics generally start to pay off when you get to six and above. So single family homes we could do, um, we're just not sure about the, the economics of it would work out. Right. Perfect. Thank you for that. As I scroll through Thanks here and see, see what else we got going on. We got a lot of, there's a lot of chat back and forth on this. All right. So Jeremy and Sonny, what have we not talked about? that we should be talking about. Here you go, all the way from Poland, Chris Thedos. Hey, buddy, good to see you. Thank you. So what, what haven't we talked about? What did we miss? What does everybody have to know that maybe we didn't cover? I think there's a, a scale up, you know, uh, because the world is facing the challenge of the housing crisis, how, uh, labor shortage, this kind of stuff. But why? Uh, it's good timing for the modular construction, but why, uh, how can scale up the modular construction in the market, which is for the newly built uh, buildings, we can account more percentage in the market. That's a kind of the challenge for, for all the uh, uh, industry. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why we want to uh, build our innovation in terms of the materials, in terms of the technology, and also to get the mass production at very competitive cost to make this happen, to, to, to scale up to, towards the, the product uh, instead of the, the, the project. Yeah, and, and, and just circling back to Michael's question about, about cost, you know, with, with volume production, and especially the modular, as we have that repeatability 
of yeah. very you know few types of modules. You have room modules and lift modules that have the the, the elevator and the stairs and the lift. Right. Um, those are forty by eight. They don't fold out, and the room modules fold out. But but that relatively small number of modules that we can repeat. Uh, the cost will come down as we have more projects and we repeat the process more and more, the cost will go down. Even if stainless steel prices are, are high, we have the volume, as Sunny mentioned, in, in, in procurement uh, and, and high volume production. So cost will go down. It's it's inevitable. Perfect. Perfect. All right. We're going to have one last question. But first, you need to mark on your calendars for Friday. We have Shemaine Nugent on the show. That's right. Ted Nugent, the famous rock star's wife, is going to be on our show this Friday, 1 o'clock, talking about her documentary called Killer House. How is mold killing us? You don't want to miss it. Put it on your calendar. If you want to check out and ask Shemaine Nugent, now is your chance. Any questions you want to ask her. Henry already started asking her about bow and arrows, I believe, earlier this week. So we'll see how it goes, but we're going to have a lot of fun. She's a lot of fun. All right, last question. Are the favorable in, in the pH world, that's for passive house, that's why we spell it that way, are the favorable thermal transfer properties of stainless steel a factor? Okay, I'm looking at the question. The pH. So they're talking about heat transfer, cold transfer with the stainless steel. Is that a factor when well, you're- Well, I, I know at, this. Well, so stainless steel, yeah. the- um, you know the propagation of, of of flames, and there's been a lot of studies that are that are demonstrate that are um, documented. In um, I, I can get you the publications, but also the AISC design manual for structured stainless steel that it has a lower propagation rate. You know for for flames, yeah. so that also can be factored in. You know to the fire fire protection uh, part of the design. I, I don't know if that fully answered the question. But yeah, um, these, these, these are the building scientists right there. I think, I think it'd be a great conversation for y'all to have the, they, they are the passive house gurus, at least have been on our show. So it's fun to, fun to see. Can you, can you give our email address, Dave? I'd love to talk further with. with yeah, with, you could, you know what, just put it right in the chat yourself there. And, uh, I can definitely connect you as well offline if you want to do that. No problem whatsoever. Or if you want to write it in the private chat, Jennifer can give it out. So. Listen, everybody, uh, we are out of time today. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Please join us Friday, like I said, with Shemaine Nugent. You do not want to miss this show. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a blast doing it and bringing you all the, all the exciting things that they are working on. They are really into sustainability. They are really into healthier living and building healthier homes. And just like uh, Broad USA, Jeremy and Sonny are, I mean, it's all about building better for the future and humanity. And I think that, uh, that says a lot on everything we covered. If you do have any more questions for them, please reach out to them directly. You can find them both on LinkedIn. Or if you don't have it, reach out to Dave Cooper Live. We're more than happy to connect you uh, with the both of them. So, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you. Thank, thank you, you Dave. for us. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Yeah, absolutely. All right, everybody, that's a wrap. We will see you on Friday. Jeremy, Sonny, don't go anywhere. We'll come back to you right at the end of the show. Bye now. Thanks, everyone.